Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so happy new year artists. We're celebrating a fresh new slate and today I'd like to paint the northern lights uh, or southern lights depending on where your imagination takes you to today. Uh, I have my three standard brushes that I use for most classes. So I have a square one inch wash brush which I refer to as the big brush. I have a medium size pointed brush and then I have my small tiny brush just three sizes there and then I also am using my old toothbrush today for some splatter painting action to create my stars. I'm going to start with a background step like I do in many of my paintings. Uh, we're working with acrylic paints of course today and the colors that I have are black and white and then also a primary blue and my favorite phthalo green. Now we're going to create a gradation for our background step. And we're going to start with our biggest brush. So I have a little bit of water on my brush. I have my water cup and my paper towels off the screen. Uh, check the description box below if you need a list of all the materials uh, that you'll need to paint along. Okay, so we're gonna start here at the bottom. Uh, and we're going to start with a blue that is mostly blue with just a pinch of black. So a nice dark sort of navy night sky type blue. You don't wanna go too dark with this though. So make sure that you're still on the blue side there. And we're just gonna start with one stripe of that gorgeous vibrant blue color here at the bottom of our canvas. Okay, just one little strip of that dark blue. And then we're gonna grab a little bit of white we're just gonna lighten it up a little bit for another stripe right on top of that first one. Okay, so we're gonna have this nice little gradation here, going from a darker blue to a lighter blue. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush because I want to experiment today with adding a little bit of phthalo green, which is one of my favorite colors. Um, but I didn't do this in my original, so we're gonna see if it works out, but I'm gonna take now a pinch of green and create a new little batch over here. And I just, I love this minty color, so I wanted to find a way to incorporate it. Um, so I'm gonna mix that in with this blue here. Uh, and so that I can add just a little bit of like frosty texture right here. And yeah, I already like that. It, it's kind of like a tropical water color. I think that's really pretty. Okay, so that's about the gradation that I have there. Now, in my mind, I'm imagining I have a little hillscape right here, uh, and I'm gonna have like a little river. Uh, so I don't wanna go up too far. So I wanna go up maybe about a third of the way here, and I have my little hill. And now what I'm going to do is create the gradation here in the sky. So this is actually a gradation that we created pretty much just for our little river reflection. Uh, so now we're going to invert that. Okay, so we're going to do that by kind of adding a little bit more dark blue now next. Okay, kind of working our way back to that darker blue color. And remember we did dark blue and then we did like a little bit of kind of just that lighter dark blue before we moved into the slightly greenish blue. So we have a three color gradation here that sort of inverts itself. Okay, so I'm grabbing just a little bit more of that color. Make sure and rinse your brush if you need to in between colors, because that is about the effect that we want here. Okay, so we went from a darker blue to a lighter blue to this gorgeous teal color to the lighter blue to the darker blue again. I love that uh, gradation. I think that's so pretty. Okay, and now we're going to do a pretty good size strip of like, a medium-ish dark blue before we get too dark up at the top. You don't want to go too dark with this step because uh, we are going to add some black trees and we just want to make sure we have enough contrast later. So don't go too dark with this. A little bit of black and that blue goes a long way, but we do want a night sky. So it is going to be pretty dark. Okay, a little bit more blue. If you're painting along with me today, 
Uh, I would love to see your work. Uh, I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club. Uh, that is for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me or just from their own studios or imaginations. So check out the description box below for that link as well. Wanted to mention that. Okay, so now we're getting a nice big area section here for our sky. And then at the top, we're just gonna go all the way to a dark blue, okay? And this, with this one, you can have a little bit more black in there. So we wanna have that night sky effect. It has to be very dark and very clear to see the Northern Lights. I got to see them I think it was about five years ago of in Alaska. So this is an homage to that experience. The ones that we'll be painting today are mostly green, which is very common. I actually got to see a little bit of purple in the ones that I got to see as well. I went up to Fairbanks. Highly, highly recommend that for your bucket list, but for now we'll go ahead and just paint them. <laughs> okay, so that looks great. Now I'm going to grab my uh, trusty toothbrush for some splatter painting action. And actually, oh, before we do the toothbrush, what we wanna do is take the medium sized brush and bring a little bit of white paint over to the side and create just a little bit of a watered down paint. First, just so we have an easy little area to dip our toothbrush in. Okay, so get that all mixed up and nice and smooth. We're just going to add now some splatter stars with our old toothbrush. Okay, just dipping that in there all the way. And I like to go on a kind of diagonal uh, to create the sort of Milky Way effect. Like so, very nice. Okay, and then since I'm gonna have a reflection, I'm gonna do sort of like a diagonal on the way down here. Although it's not an exact science, kinda just wanna get it all over uh, and have a lot of fun splatter painting. You would see a very, very clear, beautiful night sky on the type of night that you would see Northern Lights uh, as well. So that's a beautiful background. Let's go ahead and let this dry and we'll come back in a few minutes and add a whole bunch more. Okay, welcome back. I have a dry background, fresh colors. So again, I have black and white. I'm also going to be using phthalo green and blue again, and I have some fresh yellow on my palette paper as well. I also cleaned my brushes and got fresh water at break so that I can start all fresh and clean. So let's go ahead and grab our medium size pointed brush now. And we're going to create the kind of horizon line and bottom part uh, here of our, of our composition first. So let's grab a little bit of white. And before I start putting the little snowy hills, I'm going to carve out where I'm going to have my stream or river. So let's go ahead and just start on one side. And I'm going to do like a curved line like so. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same kind of curve, but I'm going to flare it out quite a bit here at the bottom. Okay, and then maybe this goes a little bit more narrow up here like so. And then from the two sides, we're going to create little hills like so. Very nice. Okay, and now still I'm just gonna use that same medium size brush and I'm going to just create my little horizon line right here, I'm trying to create a nice point here as best as I can. In fact, I think I might even bring the tiny brush in for just a second so that I can get kind of a nice little starting point there. You can always use a smaller brush if you feel like you need a little bit more control. And then in this part of the hill, I'm just going to fill that in with white, just like our beautiful snow. And we're not gonna worry too much about completely getting this all filled in like opaque and solid, because it's okay if we see a little bit of the background underneath. Okay, a little bit of water helps everything go nice and smooth. And we're gonna keep our brush strokes going back and forth in this section. 
Okay, don't get all crazy and wonky. You wanna make sure that everything is going back and forth here, allowing there to be a little bit of see-through of that beautiful snow underneath. And I'm also gonna take just a little bit of like a teal blue, which is blue and green mixed together. And I am gonna add just a little bit of frostiness right back in there. Okay, very similar to the background color. It's kind of a play there. So if you did too much blue, you can add a little bit more white back on top and just kind of play around until you like it and you get some nice, what looks like, you know, snowy ground type texture. Make sure and bring your brush strokes all the way back and forth. So it looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna start working on the other side. I'm going to do the same steps over here. Okay, just creating our beautiful little Alaskan winter scene. Okay, like so. We have a nice little river that we can see here. Maybe this is the Chena River. After all, that is where I was fortunate enough to see the Northern Lights. I went to the Chena Hot Springs Resort in Fairbanks, Alaska. And we took their Northern Lights tour and they took us out to the middle of nowhere in this really cool off-road military uh, repurposed vehicle. And it was the perfect night for it. We totally lucked out and it put on a great show for us. We stayed in a little yurt at the top of the mountains. This was in March which is a good peak time to see Northern Lights as well, but they are going crazy right now too. I'm a part of a lot of different Northern Lights, like uh, lookout groups and stuff on social media. So I can see when they're active and it always just makes me want to jump on a plane and travel North uh, and see them. But definitely uh, at least a once in a lifetime experience. It's funny, people in Alaska uh, or Iceland or you know, Finland or wherever it may be, get used to these and they see them all the time and it's like no big deal. You know, sort of like how the ocean maybe is no big deal to me here at the coast. Uh, of course, I'm grateful for the ocean every day still though and I certainly don't take it for granted. Okay, that looks really pretty. Let's create our beautiful little trees now and our northern lights are gonna be kind of the piece de la resistance of the painting. So I'm gonna grab my tiny brush now and just create a few little pine trees right on the horizon line. Making sure I have a little bit of water in there to help the paint go nice and smooth. We're just creating a nice little peekaboo forest here right on the horizon. Just a few here and there just to give us a nice little sense of place. Very nice little tiny flicks of the wrist will make a nice little pine tree like so and then I'm gonna do just a few little shadow marks right underneath them just to give them a little bit of placement there on that hill so I just did two over there I'm gonna do a little bit higher up okay and then I'm gonna do a few more over here kind of up here on this little hill Same way, just taking our time and building our beautiful little wintry scene. Okay, you can have however many trees that you would like. I like to tend to do sort of odd numbers, just so that it looks a little bit more natural and not quite so contrived, I suppose. So maybe I'll do three over here with my two over there, so I have five. I think my snowy hills look so cute. Just love those. And you could put snow on your trees. I kind of uh, played around with that when creating this painting, but I ended up just liking the trees as a black silhouette. So <laughs> I'm perhaps thinking too much into this, but when you're capturing the Northern Lights on camera, you want to have very low exposure. Uh, so pretty much just things that are emitting light or reflecting light are gonna show up on. So there's often uh, silhouette 
elements when you're doing northern lights photography so that's why i decided to keep these trees as a silhouette but you could add a little bit of snow on them if you wanted to get creative after all this is you know where we get to uh, play with the rules of nature and create our own little scene <laughs> okay so let's do our northern lights now which is going to be the kind of piece to the resistance and most important part of the painting if you ask me and we're going to just do those pretty much right dead center here now there's two ways to do this but first thing let's uh let's mix up our colors so i'm going to use two colors for my northern lights the first is going to be a light yellowish green and the second is going to be a beautiful teal green Okay, so the first color I'm going to do is that light yellowish green, which I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, a little bit of my green, and mix it together with some white. That might be a little bit too much on the green side. So I want to have it definitely be more, yeah, there we go, on the yellow side, very neon. Okay, that looks about right to me. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Okay. And then I'm going to have a teal green that's more on the green side, like so. So you see those two colors next to each other. They're pretty different. I might use a little bit of yellow once I get going as well. But we're going to do this with our big brush. And make sure that you have it all clean and fairly dry as well. So I'm drying it off my paper towels and my apron here because uh, I want to start with a damp brush, not a dripping brush or a dry brush, a damp brush. And there's two ways to do this. So there's the sort of like trace out where you're going to put it and then you put the lights themselves or it's the kind of light it up as you go. So let me show you the two different ways. So I'm going to start with my bright yellowish green and I'm going to go right along the horizon here and just kind of tap my way in orange a little bit. And then from that line, I'm just going to very gently flick my wrist in the upwards direction here. And it really is that simple. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit maybe of my teal green and add a pinch of that in there as well. Very light handed. And that is all there is to it. You can also grab maybe, like I said, a little bit more yellow. And I'm gonna kind of tap into the white here too, allowing there to be sort of different colors on that brush. Okay, there we go. So I wanted it a little bit brighter. There we go. If you go too heavy handed, you won't like it. So very, very, very delicate little brush strokes there. And that looks pretty good to me. So the other way to do it, I'm gonna come over here and show you guys, is to kind of go along as you do it. Okay, so there's that way too. I think it's a little bit easier to create the line first. So I'm gonna do it that way, but you can try out both, whatever works for you. And you want a pretty straight line here. And then just the lights coming up from there, just pulling it up like so. Very pretty. A little bit of yellow on my brush now. This is a very, surprisingly quick step it's really just more of an effect there we go having a little tiny bit of that light yellow in there because they're not just like one solid color they they are just like a rainbow it's so magical it's like the most magical experience you guys can't even begin to describe they're much small or much closer to your head than you think that they would be <laughs> as well uh, they, they just felt like they were going to come down and so I could touch them. It was so pretty. Okay, that looks pretty good. You don't want to overwork them. That one's almost getting overworked. I feel like this one looks better. Uh, so then this last one is going to be a little bit more complicated. I'm going to start like right here. So I want it to be kind of grand central station here. And then I'm actually going to come down like that. Okay, so I end up having this little curve. I'm just going right along the edge there. And building that up. And you actually just want to go right along the shape. So it will kind of have a curve in it. Okay, starting to take shape there. I think a little bit of white will do the trick. 
Okay, that looks better. And just ever so lightly with our brush, always going straight up. Little flicks of the wrist, that was some nice color there. Very nice. I experimented also with some purple since I wanted to kind of <clears throat> capture my actual experience where I did see a little bit of purple too, but it's almost hard to even capture. Like I'm not as talented of an artist yet as, you know, nature. <laughs> Okay, that looks pretty. I'm a little bit wonky here on my curve, I'm trying to figure out exactly how that would go. So I wanna make sure that that looks logical. There we go. A Little bit more white, very nice. So fun, very easy for the effect that it gives in my opinion. Okay, that looks pretty to me. I'm not gonna overwork it. I'm just gonna let it be. And then you can add like a shooting star if you want. Uh, I think that's a nice little element as well. Oop. If you want anywhere. And maybe it's even a little sparkly. How we like. Just adding a little, another little astrological element if you want and you can add any other little twinkly stars that you think might be pretty to add and maybe even any big stars like so and just complete off your lovely little night scene okay that looks cute little twinkly lights here and there only if you want, you don't have to. I just think that adds a kind of little magical element. Okay, so there we have our beautiful little winter scene complete with northern lights, twinkling stars, just so magical. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I would love to see you over in the art club. Hit like if you liked this video and until next time, stay creative.